Monday night, the White House announced that they were firing Acting Attorney General Sally Yates by issuing this press release. Traitor! I'm sorry, wrong press release. Acting Attorney General Sally Yates has betrayed the Department of Justice by refusing to enforce a legal order designed to protect the citizens of the United States. That's the one. Trump had every right to can Yates. She knew her statement would get her fired, just like most women expect to get fired upon publicly speaking their minds. It was the language of her firing that sent a chill down people's spines. Using the word betrayed yes. for somebody yeah, exactly. is frightening. That's what, what uh, exactly. an autocrat would use. Chandler is right. I mean, it is a perfectly reasonable word if you're naming a Meredith Baxter TV movie, just not when you're making staffing decisions in a republic. But we've always known there's one quality that Don Donald values above all others. How do the breasts look? Okay, fine. But what's the next quality he values? I have the most loyal people. I just think the major criteria will be loyalty to him. Trump loves loyalty. I mean, he prizes loyalty. We're all loyal to him. Remember on Gilmore Girls when Paris Geller staffed the school newspaper with her most loyal friends with no regard for talent level? <laughs> it's like that, but with the leader of the free world and nukes. More than experience, knowledge, or the ability to do a credible paso doble, <laughs> the one quality that has mattered for Trump's hires is how quickly they can say yes to him. Reince Priebus gave him the RNC mailing list. Jeff Sessions gave him enthusiastic early support and some great ideas about how to be racist within the letter of the law. Steve Bannon gave him enough deplorables to win an election. Steve Mnuchin gave him money. Andrew Pudzer gave him money. Ben Carson gave him a black friend and plausible <laughs> deniability for whatever he's up to with Jeff Sessions. <laughs> Linda McMahon gave him money. Wilbur Ross gave him money. Okay, you know what, there was a lot of money, but you get the point. If you disagree with the tenets of Trumpism, there is no place for you in the federal government. You have members of the State Department, meantime, Kristen, who have been circulating a memo opposing this ban as well. So let me play what Press Secretary Sean Spicer said when he was asked about this. If they should either get with the program or they can go. Yeah, I hear Trump has a friend who can get these traders a nice little yurt in Siberia. You know, it took Richard Nixon three years to compile his enemies list, but in less than two weeks, the Trump team has already called the media the opposition party, fired an acting attorney general, pressured the chief of Customs and Border Patrol into resigning, purged the State Department of seasoned career diplomats, kicked the director of national intelligence and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs off the National Security Council, replaced them with some crazy duty trust, because why not, and accused Lindsey Graham and John McCain, the proprietors of the 66 remaining vertebrae among Senate Republicans of trying to start World War III. Sorry guys, at the rate Trump's going, you'll probably have to settle for starting World War IV. One group of employees whose loyalty Trump can count on is the Customs and Border Patrol Union, a group Trump cultivated like prize orchids throughout the campaign. I happen to have great respect for the people on the border, the people that are securing the border, but they're told they can't do it, the Border Patrol. And the Border Patrol people are incredible. Donald Trump has brought immigration to the for forefront of his campaign, and he's the only candidate that is taking the uh, national security uh, and, the for and the enforcement of our borders seriously. There's a buzz that we've never seen before in the Border Patrol. It's like the feeling of finding contraband citrus fruit times 12. <laughs> Word is, some Border Patrol agents are so buzzed, they're reportedly defying court orders against the Muslim ban and even canceling Muslims' visas, which would normally be something the Department of Justice looks into. But between the Attorney General, who was just fired, and the loyal Melanie Wilkes, who's measuring the drapes for his new office, I'm not so sure we can count on the DOJ to push back against Trump, which means it's up to us. But bad news, as soon as you laced up your marching shoes, you made the enemies list too. The president's firing back, tweeting this moments ago. Where was all the outrage from Democrats in the opposition party, the media, when our jobs were fleeing our country? Oh, I know, I know, Zuccotti Park. It's right down the street from you. But you know what? I get it. You probably didn't stop by because you were afraid they'd make you wave your tiny hands around. 
<laughs> Liberal snowflakes are multitaskers. They can make a nuisance of themselves over white jobs and brown refugees. So please, Trump supporters, stop scream tweeting that liberals are choosing foreigners over Americans. Protesters are not your enemy. I promise, if our tantrum prone tyrant ever locks you out of America, they will march for you too. Maybe reluctantly, but they will do it. And a lot of American Muslims will too. We'll be right back. Yeah.